What's good, everybody? I'm Trey from My Damn Toys, and what just happened? I'm just kidding, but seriously. But for real, I'm going to be going through the card and telling you guys what just happened at the No Mercy Raw exclusive pay-per-view. So let's go ahead and get straight into it. Starting things off, we have the Intercontinental Championship match between Jason Jordan versus The Miz and The Miz Taraj. Starting things out, I think this match was way better than I thought it would be. Jason Jordan looked really awesome in the ring, as he always does. But, of course, his character is just lacking so much. That promo that he cut after the match was just, just Jesus Christ, son. I don't know what um, goes through his mind, but he, is, he has to definitely get better on the mic before... Um, WWE can take him seriously and put a championship on him, which is why I am glad that he did not win this match. I'm very glad that The Miz retained. Uh, we all knew there would be shenanigans in this match, but Jason Jordan did look really well in the ring, showed off his incredible strength with a few spots in the match, but overall happy with the way this match went, but let's move on to the next one. The next match we had was Finn Balor taking on Bray Wyatt, and my God, let's start off by saying that Finn Balor's gray attire was sick AF. The tights, the knee pads, the jacket even. The jacket was probably even the best part, but you guys know I love my grays and whites. But that was an amazing start to the match. And then, uh, like, the the weird thing about the match was that fishy start with the injury to the ribs when really all he did was land on his back on the announce table. I thought that was a little odd. However, I thought this was definitely their best match, but I hope this is the freaking end of this feud. Very nice match. I liked it a lot better than I thought I would. So starting out the night, we had two for two on matches that I did enjoy that I wasn't really looking forward to going into it, but I was overall happy with it. I just really want this feud to end. Please end this feud. That's the last time I'm going to say it. Up next, we have the Raw Tag Team Championship match, and sweet baby Jesus Lord, that's how you freaking wrestle, ladies and gentlemen. That was a hellacious match. That was one of my favorite matches of the year. Never a boring moment. To this point in the pay-per-view, though, none of the matches have been boring. And I was very shocked by that. I thought the first two, the Finn Balor and the Jason Jordan matches, I thought those were going to be uh, just a boring to watch. But they surprised me very much. And this one right here was just as good as I expected it to be. Maybe even a little bit better. Sheamus and Cesaro, I hope to God that finish was it like a setup towards them breaking up? Because they are one of the best tag teams, if not the best tag team right now on Raw. And they are just absolutely killing it out here. No matter who they fight, they are just tearing the effing house down. And I am just so happy with this match. I can't even get over it. Cesaro almost lost his whole face. Had blood shoot out everywhere. Teeth missing, chipped, shoved in. I don't know what was happening with his teeth. But he totally got messed up there. We had uh, Cesaro kick Dean Ambrose's head off that one time. We had some sick spots. Cesaro goes flying over the top rope. Uh, Freaking, uh, the finish. The finish was a little bit shaky in my opinion. I didn't really uh, care for that. I'm glad it wasn't a roll-up. However, I really didn't care for the finish. Um, given the, how great the match was, I just was a little disappointed how they ended it. However, just this match, Jesus Christ. I, can't, I cannot explain how great this match was. Very satisfied with this match. Up next, we have the Raw Women's Championship Fatal 5-Way match between Emma Nia Jax, Alexa Bliss, Bayley, and Sasha Banks. And this match was really awesome. I enjoyed this match a lot. I thought all five women looked really good. It was a good chance for Emma to get some shine in. Uh, hats off to Nia Jax for taking two big bumps in this match. The quadruple powerbomb double drop kick that they did to her and her landing on the neck was just amazing. I really liked that. Um, shows her uh, taking a risk there. And then her face bouncing off of the ring post there at the end of the match and falling to the outside was a really tough bump as well. So hats off to Nia Jax for that. Um, I'm very glad that Alexa Bliss retained. I figured that she would or that Bailey would win because she was added to the match. But I thought this was a really good showing by everybody. We got to see um, a lot of good near falls. I thought they were executed very good. Um, I thought they were perfect timing, all that good stuff. Very exciting match, and I was overall happy with the entire thing and including the result. Next up, we had my favorite of all time, John Cena, go up against the man himself, Roman Reigns. And as a huge Cena fan, uh, I gotta say, this one really upset me. I um, I did not like... It was a slow burn for the, for the start of it. You know, it was definitely slow. You know, had boring chants from the crowd. Um... Particularly did not like the start of it, you know, very slow, like I said. 
But um, they picked it up as they went. It got better as it went along. But Jesus Christ, that finish. I just, man, I just hate the way, like, we knew it was going to happen. I knew that Roman was going to win. I just don't like the way they did it. Like, God dang, he took, what, four AAs? He took back-to-back -back AAs. He took an AA before, and he took a super AA. So I thought for sure that he would pick up the win there, and of course I should have known better because Roman Reigns just literally took brass knuckles to the face and kicked out, and no one does that. So, I mean, I'm just, I don't know, I'm, I'm very disappointed with that outcome right there. I'm a fan of Roman, but Jesus, man, do you have to make it that way? Um, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm just sort of salty right now, but I, uh, I enjoyed the match towards the end of it, and um, I don't know what the end of that thing was uh, there at the end of the match, how they, uh, I guess it's obvious Cena's going to go away for a little bit, film some stuff, and come back, and I don't know what's next for him, and I don't know what's next for Roman Reigns. I don't know if they're going to Brock and Roman again or whatever. I, I don't know, but um, yeah, it's, uh, I don't know what's next for this, but was disappointed with the outcome of that match. Up next, we had the Cruiserweight Championship match after that trash Roman Cena debacle or whatever the hell that was. We moved on to this match. This was obviously the come down match to prepare us for the main event. But Jesus Lord, why in God's name did they put the title on Enzo Amore? I hated that. The match was a decent, I guess. But just, I don't understand. Like, I understand he may move merch and whatnot, but he's literally all talk. He's trash in the ring. He was getting his ass kicked the entire fight. One kick to the nads, and I guess that's a heel turn. I guess that's a heel turn. I don't, I don't even know what that was, but we have an idiot as our Cruiserweight Champion. You just shitted on Neville, your best, one of the best talents on the entire roster. And I, just, I hope to God he loses this title on Monday Night Raw, and they just this was just a little one-time thing because uh, there's just no... I'm, I'm speechless. I don't see how or why they did this, but... Um, Neville deserves better than that. That's just terrible. Like, Austin Aries didn't even beat Neville. And you have this Jack A come in off the street, and he's just thrusted into the cruiserweight division, and he wins off of a low blow to just, man, I hate this for Neville. I love Neville to death. Just, ah, man. Anyways, moving on. And still, your universal champion, Brock Lesnar, retains the title against Braun Strowman. And 1F5, 1F5, it took 1F5 to put away the monster, the man that's supposed to be invincible, kicks out of 1F5. I'm pretty sure Roman Reigns would have kicked out of at least two, two and a half. I, I don't know, man. I, uh, the way they built Braun up this whole time, it just seems like they just crashed all of it. And I'm going to say, uh, this whole pay-per-view, it's like the first half was amazing. They were on track for the best pay-per-view of the year. Um, still an amazing pay-per-view, by the way. But just the first half of it was amazing. And then it's like after the uh, women's match, it just started teetering the other way. And I don't know. Um, the last three matches, not that happy with. I'm not that happy with. And I just... Uh, 1F5. Took 1F5 to put away Braun. And... Um, Brock Lesnar, yeah, it looks like they're going to be riding this thing out. Um, that is that is every single match on this No Mercy card. I enjoyed the pay-per-view overall, but um, I don't know. The last half, just again with the last half, I don't, I just can't understand. It's like the first four matches, they were like, yeah, let's go out there and put on one hell of a show. And then the last three, they were like, yeah, let's just go out there and do it. Uh, just whatever... Uh, leave a like and a comment down below if you enjoyed this uh, What Just Happened series of the WWE pay-per-views with the figures. Let me know down below. Subscribe for more epic WWE and WWE figure-related videos. I guess we will see on Monday night what comes of this. Maybe they'll go one more match. I don't know what's next, but um, it looks like Roman Reigns has all the momentum. Um, it seems that they are going to save that for WrestleMania, but I guess we don't know yet. But um, subscribe for more epic WWE and WWE figure-related videos, guys, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much.